How's it going? Adam Drake here, and today I'm going to walk you through the process of building a ball differential for the MSB1 10 scale electric buggy from Yugensiki. If you don't have a MBS1 buggy, you can still enjoy the video, hopefully, learn some stuff, uh, just some of the tips and tricks that I've done over the years to help your ball differential feel really smooth and also hold up and be a little bit more durable. I will kind of take you through um, how I set it, how I break it in, and then also how you can kind of check the ball diff and slipper settings. Um, so just kind of take you through start to finish how I build a ball differential for a 10 scale electric vehicle. So with the MSB1, uh, there's two kit options. You can get the MSB1 with gear differential or with a combo that comes with a gear diff and also a ball diff. So if you're running on extremely high bite dirt tracks or possibly even like glued surfaces, you can get away with a gear differential. It'll have a little bit more kind of drive and acceleration and also a little bit more corner speed. The place where a ball diff is going to excel is more on dirt surfaces where maybe the grip is a little bit inconsistent or you're just fighting for a little bit of that, um, a little bit more initial grip or a little bit of um, more initial traction, especially if the surface is a little bit inconsistent. Okay, so here we have all the parts for the ball diff spread out. I'm gonna go ahead, throw them on a microfiber towel and just spray all the parts, wipe off, just to make sure there's no oily residue on any of the metal parts. So the thrusts, balls, washers, and also the diff balls. Then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and separate the diff and thrust balls. So there's two different size balls. The thrust balls are a little bit smaller. There's six of those and 14 of the larger 332nd carbide diff balls. So we got one more. Okay, so with everything clean, um, I'm using the Flashpoint Premium Diff Lube and the Flashpoint Thrust Lube. Um, we found this to, to work really good. Again, this, this isn't just for the Mugen car. You can use this for um, any ball differential. Um, a couple things that I do a little bit different, though, than kind of what the instructions show is in the instructions, we show to put a little bit of the, the larger diff ball grease, so the silicone based grease behind the ring to secure it to the out drive. I actually like to use a little bit of the thrust lube because the silicone lube is actually used to create grip. So the silicone lube that goes on the larger diff balls that then roll on the rings is used to create grip so that the diff doesn't slip. Well, there's a reason why these rings are not keyed in, why they actually um, are able to kind of twist and turn. And if you use a non-silicone based lube like what we have for the thrust, <clears throat> it can help save the diff a little bit. Um, you don't want to rely on this, but if you land really hard on throttle, sometimes instead of barking the balls on the rings, the rings can actually slip a little bit on the outdrive, and overall it'll just save your diff. So you don't need much because you wanna make sure that the lube doesn't fling off and then contaminate um, the silicone lube that's on the actual diff balls and rings. But I'm just gonna apply a little bit of the Flashpoint Red Grease and just kind of have a, a really thin, even coat all the way around. 
kind of wipe off any excess with my finger. And then apply the diff ring and then I'll just kind of take and wipe it on a microfiber towel just to make sure that you don't have any of that red grease on the surface of the ring where it's going to be in contact uh, with the diff balls. So we'll do that to the other side as well. So uh, kind of a backstory on that is uh, way back in the gas truck days, um, Associated always had this style out drive and ring where Losi had a D ring that um, locked into the out drive. And um, that was something that Losi over time changed to, went away from the D ring and went to, to this more traditional um, ring that again it does allow it to to turn um, as far as um, the spring i do like to take the spring and compress it a few times with some pliers i feel that if you compress the spring um, once you've fully collapsed it and compressed it a couple times it helps the diff stay a little bit more consistent longer um, it's not something that you have to do but again, you want to make sure once you put the diff in the car and you break it in that the diff adjustment stays as consistent as possible. And by compressing this spring, it helps with that. So to compress the spring, I'll just take it and put it in a big pair of pliers. Make sure that you have it aligned nicely because um, you don't want to have it shoot out across your pit room. And again, I'll just compress the spring a couple times and take the spring, turn it. Same thing, just fully compress it, hold it, and that will just help the diff um, kind of hold a, a nicer, more consistent adjustment. When dropping the spring and the nut, it goes into the male out drive. So you just drop the spring in Put the nut, I'll take a 1.5, make sure that's fully seated. As far as the thrust assembly goes, go ahead and put one of the thrust washers on. Apply a fair bit of the flashpoint red grease because we can always wipe off any of the excess. And then I'll take the six thrust balls, put them in the palm of my hand, and then just kind of roll that around, and the balls will end up sticking to the grease. And then you'll just want to work a little bit of extra grease around, make sure that the balls end up... Um, Kind of towards the bottom of this bottom washer and then you'll apply the top thrust washer and then when you sandwich all this together you're just wanting to make sure that the balls are kind of um, equally spaced and seated in there um, and that there's a good amount of grease. If needed, you can come back around, kind of smooth out any of the excess grease. Sometimes one of the balls will end up uh, sticking to, to what you're using to apply the grease. But um, again, you want to use a fairly uh, good amount of grease, but you don't want so much that when you put this in, you make the adjustment that the grease flings all over. It's not really a problem because we do have the O-ring um, but that's going to go into the female out drive. So I like to stand the diff screw up and pull that through. And then I'll just kind of work that back and forth just to allow the rings and balls to, to get fully seated. We'll take 
the bearings. So now I have the two halves uh, basically fully ready to go. We can put away the red grease for now. And then I'm going to go ahead and build up um, the actual diff balls into the diff gear. So make sure you clean whatever you're using really good to apply the lube. And then I take some of the Flashpoint clear lube. I go ahead and put it onto just a little piece of plastic and then I'll just kind of work those balls around. I know that sounds kind of bad, but work those diff balls around to make sure you have an even coat of the silicone grease. This will make it a little bit easier uh, when you go to drop them into the gear. So for now, I'm not super worried about having them fall into each of the uh, holes in the diff gear. I will then go back and press each of them into the holes in the diff gear. And again, this, this silicone lube is made to create traction for the balls on the diff rings so that the diff doesn't bark. But the diff setting is extremely crucial to make sure that the diff, you don't bark the diff. So it's, it's basically the relationship between the setting of the slipper and uh, the diff tension. So, got a couple more here to get into place. And then we got the last one here. All right, so we have each of the 14 carbide diff balls into the diff gear. They are lightly coated, but that is not enough grease um, overall. So now we're gonna go back and you can use, I have just like a tuning screwdriver here. You could use a 1.5 or two mil wrench, but I'm gonna just apply, just kind of dab a little bit of grease to each of the 14 balls on both sides. And it's okay if right now you're maybe using a little bit um, of excess grease because we'll go back around and clean that up. But again, just want to make sure that each of those 14 carbide diff balls are coated because this is what's going to give, uh, give them traction onto the uh, diff rings. Okay, so again, I have a fair amount of grease, used more than what we're gonna actually need, but I'm gonna take my tuning driver and first I'm gonna, I'm not gonna push this all the way down to where the balls are. I'm gonna just basically swipe around the outside to take any excess lube, do the same thing on the other side. Go ahead and wipe that off. <clears throat> And then I'm going to go inside of where the balls are riding in the gear and again take off any of the excess lube. Okay, so we got that done. We could put Set the silicone lube to the side. And now we're going to go ahead and assemble all this. So what I like to do is the male side that already has the two bearings, I'll just drop push that down, work it around a little bit. And then 
the side with the thrust assembly. I'll take a two mil wrench. That way it holds the thrust assembly in place. And turn that, you'll feel it start to grab um, the diff nut. It'll turn that until you start to feel there's a little tension. And then I'll just start to work the diff back and forth and make sure um, that everything is like fully seated and engaged. Um, you don't have to worry about making the diff super tight now um, until we get it into the car. Um, I like to sometimes just take a dog bone and actually do a little bit of the diff break in before I put it into the car. Um, nowadays, there's diff checkers like this from Sky RC. Uh, you can use this to set the tension. But right now I'm not super worried about applying a ton of tension until the diff is ready to go in the car. One thing you always want to make sure of when you put a brand new diff in your car is to back the slipper cut clutch nut off to make the slipper setting loose because you don't want to bark the diff when it's brand new. But I'll just work the diff back and forth, make sure everything is super free, um, nice and smooth, and um, then you can go ahead, tighten it just a little bit, and do the same thing, kind of work the diff back and forth. And then I'll do that one more time. So again, if you have one of these diff checkers, um, you can check the tension, but the tension before it's broken in isn't super important because the, the ultimate thing you're wanting to do is make sure it has enough tension when it's in, in working order. Um, so if I were to take and drop this into the car, kind of the next thing that I would do, um, we're gonna just go off uh, pretend that I just dropped one of those diffs into my car and I'm going to show you um, how I would break in the differential. So we'll go ahead, power everything up. And then you're just going to simply hold the right tire or left tire and just apply a very small amount of throttle. And what this is doing is it's basically just running the diff balls on the rings, basically running them in, creating um, a nice surface um, for them to ride on, creating a little bit more surface area because it will actually um, almost kind of create a groove or a path for those balls to run in. Then I'll grab the left tire, do the same, just kind of work that back and forth. Um, maybe doing 30 seconds on one, 30 seconds on the other. And then I will take and hold the spur gear and just kind of flick the diff and feel the diff tension. Um, kind of a, a normal uh, rule of thumb if you don't have a diff checker. Uh, you can sometimes tell, like, I have the J-Concept Smoothie 2 in silver compound, so it has a silver dot. When you hold the spur and flick the diff, my diff right now is spinning just under one turn. Um, so that's a, a pretty safe place to start, right in that kind of one turn area. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more of just kind of running and breaking the diff in. If the tension on the diff, if it's when you flick the tire, it's turning more than one rotation, then you may want to go in and adjust the diff again just slightly um, to apply a little bit more tension. And you want to just make sure that there's no chance of you barking the diff. You don't want to go through this whole process of building a brand new diff, getting everything ready, and then when you go to set the slipper, you bark the diff and basically the damage is done. So if you're wanting to check the, 
if you're wanting to check the diff tension in relation to the slipper setting, it's actually really easy. You'll hold the right tire and spur gear in one hand, and then you will turn the left tire. And you wanna make sure that that slipper spring is turning at the same rate that uh, the tire is turning. So if you're able to turn this tire and that slipper spring and or the slipper plate is not turning, that means the differential is slipping, not the slipper. And you always want to make sure that the slipper is slipping. You never want to slip the differential. So again, quick test, hold one tire, hold the spur gear, and then you will turn the opposite tire. It doesn't matter which direction you're turning it. But when you're turning this, you want to make sure that that slipper spring is turning. If the slipper spring and slipper plate are not turning at the same rate, again, your diff is slipping. If you're just slipping it uh, by turning it by hand, it's not really like barking the diff. It's not going to cause a lot of damage. But the second you actually turn everything back on and go to set your slipper, if, if when you go to set the slipper, you roll the throttle on and you bark the diff, you've caused damage to the diff balls and to the rings. So it's, it's really kind of a setting that you just kind of get a feel for, but again, just make sure that the slipper slips before the diff. If you then hold the radio and one tire in one hand, hold the other tire and apply the throttle, you can hear that it's the slipper slipping and not the differential. It's not quite picking the front tires up, so the slipper's actually still a little bit on the loose side, but that's a really safe setting for the initial running. Uh, once you run, uh, you know, maybe a half a battery pack or one full battery pack, you can pull in, either use a diff checker or flick, flick the tire, check the diff, and then apply a little bit more tension to the slipper, um, depending on the track conditions, if, if you need it to have a little bit less slip and a little bit more acceleration. Uh, but hopefully this helps you uh, build a good ball diff that not only holds up well, um, but also performs well on the track. As far as ball diff settings, uh, typically a looser ball diff is gonna be a little bit smoother off power steering a little bit more mid-corner rotation, um, but not quite as much forward drive or grip when you initially pick up the throttle. And then the opposite would be a tighter diff setting is gonna make the car a little bit more aggressive getting into the corner. It's gonna uh, reduce mid-corner rotation slightly, but it's gonna give it more forward drive and acceleration uh, or initial grip when you pick up the throttle. So hopefully you enjoyed this, and again, hopefully this helps you build a good long-lasting ball differential.